Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source, just trying to have a fun time. I'm Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryan, and you are at home, maybe watching this live, probably listening to us in podcast format after the fact, but that's awesome too. Glad to have you. We got some things to talk about this week, Joe Bryan. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Lots of wonderful things. <laughs> Including having fun on Trackmania. What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> Trackmania the Stadium Squared. Is Squared. The, yes. <laughs> Trackmania 2. <laughs> People Squared. have a hard time finding that, too. I, I, I put it up you know, as many times as I can. Like, which one is it? And you know what? That's fair, because you can easily get confused. You know what? A uh, very common thing that happens is people will see streamers playing the latest and greatest Trackmania, the 2020 version. Yeah. And they'll go to Steam and buy Trackmania Nations United Forever, Trackmania Oh, Stadium, yes. Thinking yeah, because like, there's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are getting me. We're all getting kind of good. Yay. Yeah, I am getting better. I, it, what's, what I've been happy about was like last Friday, I was, I was placing um, consistently second, third, fourth, sometimes first place on, on the maps, on hard maps. So I know I'm getting better. <laughs> it's a good thing to be able to track your progression like that, isn't it? Yeah. Like, ah, yeah. I remember when I was in. And, <laughs> you know, I see that with a bunch of people that are playing with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. We have our, our own private server that's set up. Everyone's welcome to join if you're a Patreon or Twitch sub. All the information, it is pinned in our track manias and channel. But it's running 24-7, and during the week, you know, we do 14 new maps every Tuesday. And we play on We get together on Tuesday, we stream it, and then Linux and Labs come hang out, just talk with us. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, we change the modes up, and we have some, you know, fun and prizes type thing going on. But, especially for people like us, getting getting on in years, it's interesting, and, and it's good for your brain meets, because it is a physics platforming game that makes you think ahead. You can't react to everything, and it's fun watching yeah. everyone scream with joy yeah they're uh -huh. screaming with joy as they're flying yes. off the tracks sometimes trying to figure <laughs> it out it's Absolutely. a fun time it's a good time i'm glad everybody is enjoying it and yeah we're, we're getting dangerous now we're like all right all right it's uh you can see the entire group pretty much getting close to like the world records you know within you know three or four seconds within the first five minutes mm -hmm. and of course we've had a dns joe DSN Joe, which I'm going to call you DNS Joe. You should deal with it. <laughs> DSNG <-D> Joe. <laughs> and uh, Pro Tools. PT. Yeah, PT. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who are the two newest people that have uh, joined. And it, it's great getting new people in. We got a maximum set of like 12 because I don't want to have more than 12 because it was way over 12 and it was impossible to keep track of. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it's got like three spots if you want to come pop in and play around. Love to have you. However, I did something that goes completely against everything I stand for. I flashed the BIOS on a perfectly working machine. Ooh, that's scary, Ben. It is. <laughs> it is. You immediately, the entire time, even when you're like putting it on the thumb drive, you're like, this is a bad idea. This is horrible. If fate mm -hmm. was to ever conspire against me, Joe, it yeah. would be right now. Why? Because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the machine, and I'm flashing the BIOS. Can you tell I might have had some bad experience? I feel like I'm entering nuclear launch codes every time I've ever touched a BIOS in my entire life. And yes, I understand. We have modern things with like flashback and all that. Doesn't change those feels. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just ingrained in you since the 80s of building computers. You don't, you don't want to be <laughs> pulling the EEPROM and like hitting it with a light to blink it. And okay, let's try that again. Yeah. So I have an antique motherboard. I have a vintage motherboard that we use as the streaming system. X399, not Intel, X399, AMD X399, which is Gen mm -hmm. 1 Threadripper. So I was thinking, I'm like, hey, you know what? We got these uh, Intel cards coming out. They require pretty much resizable bar. And I'm like, well, this board doesn't have resizable bar support. So I got curious, and there was a beta BIOS that, lo and behold, gives me rebar support. Mm, it is yay. there. I'm like, huh. And yeah, there it is on uh, my... Uh, creation creator pro whatever stupid motherboard it is and there's resizable bar showing up in the nvidia control panel and nice. it is yeah 
<laughs> so I was super excited, Jill, when um, I got up this morning and I headed over to Newegg and I'm like, let me go ahead and not be able to buy the A770 <laughs> or the A750. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I had just put the A750 in my cart, and just before the show, I refreshed it, and it wasn't available. <laughs> None of them. None of them. Look, okay, even the one from Asrock, uh, the Phantom Gaming, they're, they're, they're just gone. They're poof. Yeah. And it's really annoying, because, you know, like you, Vin, this morning, I got up, the first thing I checked, of course, is Newegg, and then I also checked Amazon to see if the art cards were available, because I was hoping that, you know, Intel would have a, a massive launch, and they're not on Amazon yet. I'm like, one of the major retailers in the world, and they're not representative. What's up with that? That was kind of strange. That was kind of <laughs> strange. I, I had to resort to, like, there wasn't a clear path to just go buy these things either. Like I you yeah. do, a, do a Google search for like buying one. You find a bunch of articles from like last week that don't link to anything. I finally found on Twitter somebody linking mm. directly to like Newegg. I'm like, oh, there's one place I can get them because, like you, I checked Amazon. They're not there. Yeah, I checked eBay, and you, they're not going to be. Oh, here, here's something that'll make you a little bit grumpy because it'll take a couple of days for these things to show up in the hands of scalpers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe this weekend, definitely by Monday, check eBay and see what people are going to attempt to get for one of these, which I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed in like uh, supply and demand here because uh, it's like these cards are made. These cards have been made. They Yeah. They're been out for ready to go. Right. A couple years. <laughs> well, I'm going to say Intel's like had the 777, <laughs> all of the Intel parts. Like there shouldn't be any shortage on this. We just went, I just got done with three years of this nonsense. I have negative patience for that. Mm -hmm. That's what I wrote on Twitter. I'm like, well, there's one way to make sure I wait for the AMD announcement because I'm just going to get a 770, 16 gig, Founders Edition. I was this morning for everyone. Let's find out what it does under Linux. Let's see how it works with the compute. Let's see how it works mm -hmm. with OBS. Let's see how it works with OBS, um, DaVinci Resolve. And all this, thing. and yes, we'll see how it plays games too, which you know I'm kind of interested in as well. But uh, -uh it's just not going to happen. Why? Because they made six of them apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's one way of like, oh, there's a massive demand. That's one way to look at it. The other is they made six of them. They didn't have yeah. much in stock, which you would think. Yeah, now, especially after two years, you would think Intel yeah. would have had learned because this. This was the problem, you know, uh, before Nvidia. trying to get <laughs> trying to get a hold of an A380, and, and that was well, two the, years ago. The A380, I don't think it's been quite or two year, years. Year yeah, ago. About a year. Yeah. I don't think the A380 was ever intended as a um, domestic part. Mm. It, I think it was just Ford market only because it, that could just, uh, outside of the encoder, it didn't really make sense. Yeah. But, like, good foot Ford is to make these things like crazy readily available. And yeah. I, I have to imagine like the 770 with 16 gigabytes of uh, GDDR, GDDR6, 350, that's that's the interesting, like, and, but that's all it is. Like, eh, like, maybe I'll play it. That It immediately dissolves. I'm like, do you want to get on a waiting list? Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, I'll just wait for the AMD announcement and I'll just pick up the 770 used. In a couple of months because they're going to be around mm -hmm. that's where i'm at at the end of the day and I'm very yeah not disappointed but very surprised a company the size of Intel. yeah i know that's why i'm like haven't they learned from their mistakes in the last year I don't or think so Intel's this... necessarily had that problem like intel out of all the companies <laughs> knows how to ship product yeah they they got Processors. this they got this locked down you're gonna have a tough time convincing me that this wasn't like any shortage right now is a hundred percent intentional on intel's part yeah trying to build that drama and that True. that scarcity the uh <laughs> like taking a play at old nintendo's playbook I'm like well yeah i seeded so many to the market i'm like okay that's fine i'll just get something else <laughs> i mean especially if you're in the market for something immediately outside of just wanting to play with it, the need factor, what is there? I'll tell you what there is. There, there's a glut of used 30 series 
on the used market. <laughs> that's what that's what it is. That's what it is. I was talking about last night. I'm like, you know what? I might. Do you know what would be a really good um like all around card to pick up on the cheap right now? A twenty eighty Ti. Yeah, very good. <laughs> a lot of memory. Way powerful than a more powerful than a thirty sixty. Way more powerful than a seven seventy. If you get one of those for like three hundred bucks, are you kidding? I'd buy one. Yeah. I'd buy one. I shouldn't say that because this afternoon I'll see one pop up on eBay. I'm like, welp. <laughs> there you go, Ben. <laughs> mm. But here's the thing. If I had gotten an Intel card, or maybe I'll be able to go, uh, my soulless corporation choice will not be t- blue. It'll be red. But either way, it'll make my life a little bit easier. And I, I'll be able to try out things like Waylon on mm-hmm. Linux. That's and that's exciting. right. Right? <laughs> uh Recently, we have been working on native Wayland support on Linux. This is from the Blender Foundation. And here it is. Like it or not, Wayland's the future. Blender has decided just to go full Wayland on the official builds. It's been around in other forms if you wanted to play with it. But it's going to be officially supported with Blender 3.4 going forward. Probably. Couple of issues still remain. Couple of them. No tablet support. No 3D mouse support, and no cursor warping, no window frames, and no high DPI support. None of those are exactly showstoppers, unless you're somebody who's messed up and bought the 3D mouse. You're never going to go back <laughs> yeah. to anything else. <laughs> um, and they do bring up a couple of things in here. Like, unlike X, uh, different Wayland compositors, they have different behaviors. So everybody's got their own quirks in the future. Hopefully all that's going to get ironed out and everybody's going to be nice and copacetic. But you know, I like seeing uh, more and more coming to Wayland because it's, it's, it is the future, like it or not, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they had to eventually uh, move over to Wayland anyways to support users running Blender on render farms. Because uh, there are uh, plenty of companies using Fedora and using other OSs that default to Wayland by default. So that makes sense. And what was interesting in the article is they said the Blender devs had to consider using SDL. Um, They did consider it, but it would require them to become SDL developers to properly support Blender, and they weren't quite ready for that. And, you know, they're thinking... there's a Ryan C. Gordon vibrating. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And, you know, truthfully, SDL's focus is on gaming, which isn't necessarily aligned with the needs of application developers <laughs> so there you go but that makes sense i am happy they are you know retooling for wayland <laughs> awesome i want to see it's going to be easier and easier and easier and every time i try to think about how's this going to play out when is everything what, what are we going to get to the point where we only have a couple of legacy x applications outside of games but games we're going to be able to handle yeah that's not going to be a problem um what I'm saying is XFCE, hear me out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe one day. Uh, that'll be the turning point. The only time I've ever really played with Wayland is when NVIDIA enabled the EGL things mm. in their driver. And I'm like launched a little. I'm like, hey, look, there's the thing. I don't have a need for it right yeah. now. And um, my current situation, I don't have a play around box. So. And I also try to avoid running Blender like the plague. (laughs) Oh, I love Blender. (laughs) I talk for years. I I respect (laughs) Blender. I think it's awesome. (laughs) I don't like dealing with 3D modeling software unless I absolutely have to. (laughs) That's a me thing, and it has nothing to do with Blender. I just, every time I have to come back to Blender, each usually once a year, (laughs) my brain comfortably just rejects everything that I learned last time. I mean, I'm talking like, how do I render this out into frames? To, like it's <laughs> yeah, gone. I remember. It's yeah. completely gone. I have to start from square one. So firmware. We we're talking about firmware because BIOS is UFIs. Do we call them BIOSes? I'm just always going to call it BIOS. <laughs> yeah, same here. The Instead basic UEFI. input output system. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I need to flash the UFI. Yes. Like, oh, are 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 you sick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so speaking of uh, BIOSes or UEFI, uh, there has been a big update to the FWUPD firmware updates application for I Linux. Still maintain that sounds like a file system. I know it does. <laughs> Fwapti. Fwapti. 
<laughs> so anyways, F F F W U P D 1.8.6 it has been released and includes new support for hardware that many users both at home and server side have needed including this is a big one firmware support for super micro servers running the redfish protocol for managing servers and that's wonderful because i know so many businesses use those super micro motherboards <laughs> so this this was a very very big deal and thank you for our to our theron and chat for posting this in our discord chat and making us aware of this this was, this was uh, major news and the other cool thing about ff <laughs> ff <laughs> FWUPD is that the developers reduced the installed package size by more than 30% by compressing some data files, building some plugins into the binary, and actually splitting out common code and tools. And it now also uses a higher compression preset for UEFI splash images. So it, it, it's become a lot faster, more efficient, and more hardware support. It's always a good thing. And thank you to Richard Hugh Husey out there for developing the uh, the app and all the good stuff, all the all firmware. The <laughs> Linux vendor firmware <laughs> services, like big yeah. companies too. Um, or third, as he pointed out, like Super Micro, right? Um, yeah. Like, no joke. As <laughs> weird as my life has become, the next motherboard I'm going to be buying more than likely will come from Super Micro. Yeah. And yeah, knowing that that's going to be there, it's not official, it's community, but still, HP, mm -hmm. Intel, ThinkPads, Logitech, Dell, um, mm -hmm. Corsair. Yeah. Or Lenovo, IBM. Yeah. <laughs> if you get yeah. a laptop, you're probably a lot more familiar with this, but that ability, because you got to think about it, you know, but playing with Linux for the last 30 years, like, Firmware, I'm going to say for the last 25, 24 years, was just something that was on the device when you bought it and you probably never updated it. Because you didn't, I mean, what was your path? Install a Windows box, set up a Windows box for firmware updates or mm -hmm. something along those lines. so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, me, I'm not updating the firmware unless something is broke. So, yeah. <laughs> It is curious. I've definitely installed this a couple of times on the box. It's just to light yeah. up everything. I'm like, hey, what could I update the firmware? I'm like, hmm, that's really neat. I, I all of these things, a couple of drives, all this needs firmware updates, and I'm not doing it because it's not broke. But I could if I wanted to, and I like that option. I think that's really neat. Mm -hmm. I think that's really neat. Yeah, really look how excited. the Linux vendor firmware service has, you know, changed the Linux ecosystem. It's right. It's huge. It's it's one of the most important applications, honestly, <laughs> right now in Linux. <laughs> well, you got to have that. And again, I think yeah. this, you know, you're probably a lot more familiar with this if your daily drivers is a laptop because you have a lot, of, a lot more devices. And then we got things like we talked about last week with Debian. Mm -hmm. It's like we're finally going to start shipping closed source firmware and all that. Yeah. It's just a good time. You need these things in modern systems. And yeah, always good to see an update from the not a file system. LVFS. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> just just call it like Stefan. Come on. Yeah, Stefan. <laughs> or you could do what I've been doing. F F Whoop D. <laughs> uh, application. You know, my brain misreads it as loves. Oh, okay. That that makes sense. <laughs> you know what? Swap the V and the F and we'll just call it loves. The love file system. <laughs> That's not a file system. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you might be familiar with our next story. We're talking about Firefox Relay, which launched back in 2020 to help protect your user email addresses. Because, well, let's be faced, most people watching this show, you just made another email account on your server. But you can now do the same, effectively the same thing with your phone number. There's a catch. Yeah. That catch is $4.99 a month. But you're going to get a new number of 50 minutes ago, 75 text messages. It's available in the U.S. and the U.S. is hat, Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, it's basically Google Voice minus the outbound calls and texts. No mention on how it handles voicemails. So there's that. Now, I've been using Grand Central, now Google Voice, for the past 15 years. Now, if this can eventually compete with Google Voice, it might be worth it to some people, like looking to opt out of the Google data collection machine, right? Yeah. I definitely think there's <laughs> a market there. But 
Speaking to that point, Mozilla, you need to make it very crystal clear how you're handling data collection, reselling of that information. Because for $4.99, that number better be zero. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I will stick to my word. I will spite myself if I say I'm going to do something and I have said in the past. If you give me an option to Google Voice, even if I pay for it, because that's one of the problems with Google Voice is it's not a service you pay for. They can just disappear at any time they want. Yeah. And I have no idea what my actual mobile phone number is. None. Zero. Like you could hold a loaded penguin to my head and I would be unable to tell you. However, four ninety nine a month, if I could get a service that also would support the Mozilla Foundation and as the throw in, I don't I don't need the time for calling. I don't need text messaging, but I do need voicemail and I do need outbound text. For four ninety nine a month, I'd gladly give them that if they were not mining data or reselling my information to anyone. I don't care if it's anonymized or not. How about you, Jill? You just yeah. want to give them all the money and be like, oh, take all my data. Yeah. Well, fortunately, Firefox has a good history of of not mining your data generally, but things have changed. <laughs> now, we were talking about that earlier before the show started. Yeah, it's, uh, we, ju we just need to see that fine fine print. Uh, it's kind of, yeah. I, neither <laughs> of us are really comfortable saying, but we got to be yeah. honest about it. In 2022, you can't just automatically assume the Mozilla Foundation is going to default to do nothing bad. Like, yeah. Want to, want to. Yeah. We love our Firefox. But I, I, I got to see love. that written down. I got to see a public statement of, um, then I'll gladly give you $5 a month and I'll go through the hassle of uh, moving my number over that. Mm -hmm. Because I don't well, give anybody I, my number. Again, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Right? I have my two yeah. Google Voice numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I think this is honestly uh, brilliant. And they they have, they did it originally with Firefox re Relay with email accounts. So they set up a, a fake email account that all the spam went to. Like all of us have, have done over the years. <laughs> I have two fake spam email accounts. But I think it was nice. I think this was a, uh, this is unique and a good way of thinking for security. Um, and, and it could be a very big deal if this in true, you know, is a, is a, a true spam, uh, takes your spam, but doesn't, uh, give it out. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. places that require a number now. Okay. Here's an interesting thing I do run into because I legitimately use my two Google voice numbers for everything. And there are some services like, um, you know, steam mobile authenticator. Yeah. Initially, yeah. when that launched, it said, no, you can't use this with a Google Voice number. Mm -hmm. So if Firefox guaranteed me I wouldn't run into that with, you know, then they eventually changed it because, hey, I don't care how you want to use it. Always use two-factor, all the things. Yeah. Um, if they could guarantee that I would never run into, you know, setting that up or, you know, filling out any type of form, like, no, because there's detection for that. Because why people spam with Google Voice? Yeah. So I, I want to help, you know, Mozilla needs to stick around out of some of their crackpot ideas to monetize things over the past couple of years. This one makes sense. There's mm -hmm. potential here. Yeah. There is. So hmm. you know what else makes sense, Joe? Yeah. What, Ben? Giving us money. <laughs> Our wonderful patrons. <laughs> you can do that by heading over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. we got a bunch of different levels that you can choose if you so dare to support us uh, from Chairlings, Death Notes, Sea Monsters. And uh, we got seven levels. Seven mm -hmm. levels. I wonder if that's intentional. What else has seven levels? I forget. Um, executive producers, advisors, all the way up to corporate overlords. Overlords. Wow. That's great. <laughs> and um, I had to I had to fight with Patreon to make sure that that balanced out to true fitty. Okay. That's yeah. why it's such a weird number. <laughs> uh, we got a bunch of bonus as we throw in. If you like this show, we have the live and uncut version of it, which is usually about an hour long. You know, we try to keep the show around 30 minutes, but that's the pre-show and post-show video format. And of course, podcast as well. Same thing for Linux Gamecast Weekly, except instead of being an hour long, it's like four hours long. So if you need a lot of tech stuff in the background to listen to while you're at work, it's there. 
waiting for your early access to anything that I'm working on as far as produce videos, interfacing Linux, OBS, basics, all that. You get a taste of that early to help out with it. See if you spot anything, got ideas, suggestions, because we love all the community. That's our feedback. Speaking of community, hop in our Discord, hop in our IRC, or just hop in Twitch. That's where we're hanging out mm-hmm. the other six days of the week. We do have a couple of things. Oh, speaking of LinuxGameCast.com, that has been migrated. So we Woo-hoo. are sitting on, uh, we're still back behind Cloudflare. I'm not saying come at me. No one test our Cloudflare gets set up. Uh, but yeah, all that's been for about two and a half, three months because I had to move right at 670 gigabytes of data from one place to the other. It took a minute, which I learned. And um, set up on a new host, get everything together. It's all locked in. I still got to play around with some of the caching stuff because the first live test was uh, Linux Teamcast Weekly mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Sunday, and it only turned into a smoldering creator for a little bit. Oh, yes. Which is good. <laughs> which is good. An acceptable amount of smoldering creator for your web zone is like, okay, then. It just a little back. bit of fire is okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. It wasn't too bad. But we got a support page over at LinuxTeamcast.com with our merch, PayPal, uh, we got a store and, you know, we got wish zones, Amazon wish list. If you <laughs> pick up anything rainbow. that's like crazy, Plug. insane, RGB colored, you can uh, send us a note. We'll read it on the show. Jill's got one. I got one. See, I told you I was thinking about getting super, super mic. Yeah, look. there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Jill. But look at that. $500 for mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, um, that's hard. <laughs> but at least it's it, it's green. It's vintage, right? Yes, no, <laughs> absolutely. <make> <laughs> Maybe I can buy some LEDs and some stickers and stick some blinky stuff on it. I don't know. <laughs> we do thank you for your support, allowing us to do it how we want to do it, which is being yeah. ourselves. You know, we'll never, uh, hopefully we'll never sell out. I don't know. Maybe it'll we'll show up next week with like Microsoft t-shirts on and be like, so about that selling out <laughs> thing. Um, <laughs> Microsoft loves Linux. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's get into a slice pie. Yeah. Because we want to know. Oh, that's that's a good one. It's a question mark candle on top of a cake. Not a pie, but <laughs> close enough, Ben. <laughs> so what happens if I put icing on a pie? <laughs> well, icing might taste a little funny, although I guess it's kind of like whipped cream. <laughs> so. What if I put yeah. a crust on a cake? <laughs> that's okay. Uh, actually... That would work. That would work. <laughs> I've had actually cakes with crust in it. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're trying to, you know, really hit you with philosophy. What is a pie? Yeah. <laughs> what is a pie? It's an it's it, a, a number that we can't resolve. Well, the kind of pies we're talking about, Jill Bryant, <laughs> are the ones you can't buy. Yes. So for those of you looking to buy a Raspberry Pi board, it... Looks like finding one and buying one at a reasonable price isn't going to happen anytime well, that's fine. soon. Whatever. I can't buy a pie. I'll just go buy an Arc 770 fountain. No, I won't. No, you won't. <laughs> so I had actually speculated that most of the limited production was going to businesses because of the pandemic hardware supply problems and great demand. Well, it turns out I was right. So in the article, it talks talks about this. So 4000 400,000 pies are still being made every month, but most are going to businesses who rely on pie boards to run their businesses. And the Raspberry Pi founder, Eben Upton, said a year ago that there were early signs that the supply chain situation is starting to ease, but backed up demand could still explain the short supply, even if the pies components have gotten easier to buy. And yes, that is still true today. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it is, me and Van have been talking about this for a long time, how, how hard it is to get a Raspberry Pi and how expensive they are when you find one. <laughs> so. It is. I mean, it's getting absolutely <laughs> crazy. Uh, I managed to get my Pi 4, get a Pi 4 back here in the rack just sitting, uh, and it's running um, the Stream Deck. And I bought it when they were yeah. just getting just a little bit scared. So, like, you mm-hmm. couldn't really find one on Amazon or Adafruit. They'd be out of stock, but what was in stock were the kits, and these were the kits that made sense. Yeah, you know, you know, it had a seventy-five dollar eight gig pie in it, but it also had a charger, it had a case, and yeah, all the yeah. other stuff that 
you know, like hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, 120 bucks. I think that's what I paid for this one. It made perfect sense. Now the only way, what do you think it, it would cost us mm-hmm. today to get a, uh, a gig buy on Amazon? Oh. What do you think, Jill? No cheating. Uh, $250? <laughs> eight gigabyte. <laughs> what do look. we do? Buy four. Let's do an eight gig. Are you? Okay. I'm not okay. even getting here. I typed in 8GB Pi 4. What is it trying to sell me, Joe? <laughs> Zotac Gaming <laughs> GeForce RTX 3050. <laughs> Twin Edge with 8 gigs of RAM. <laughs> Interesting. What? Okay. What? <laughs> Very Pi 4. Okay. You, oh, that's still bad, though. Yeah. 184. Oh. For a $75 part. Okay. Well, it is it is lower than I last checked. It was over 200 last I checked. Well, that kit's going to run you like 250, 199, 245. Yeah. Like that. Oh, boy. No. No. Uh, and it, look, look at that. Like You want to talk about <laughs> extra rare, a compute yeah. module. We'll see yeah. For. 199 for a compute module, four gig. Wow. That's uh, <laughs> that's crazy. And yeah, they're saying they're making $400,000 a month, but those are being allocated towards businesses i w- yeah you might consider allocating some of that towards the end users because yeah absolutely well fortunately there is uh raspberry pi locator.com which is in our, our show notes and and the article on ars technica you know mentioned it it's a good place you can go and, and track uh who what retailers have the pies available and what models mm-hmm. And last I checked yesterday, there was nothing here. Everything was available only across the pond <laughs> in Europe. So, <laughs> Right, if we just want to pop over to Cambridge and head to the pie store, I'm sure they've allocated a couple. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And occasionally, I know at the, at, the, at the micro center here, occasionally you can find them mm-hmm. at decent prices, but it's sporadic. <laughs> and yeah, I would like a couple of extra 8-gig Pi 4s to play around with, but the yeah. amount of care I have for that, granted, is slightly higher than I did for the Arc 770 Founders Edition being out of stock, mm. which I was like, I give negative cares. <laughs> I played this game for the last two years. I'm done with this Intel. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> yeah. like, there, I will not even participate in this. Um, like, I'll probably just get an AMD card out of spite. Yeah. But uh, with the Raspberry Pi 4, where I'm at with that, is I'll pop over to Adafruit and like, hey, is that no, not in stock? All right, whatever. And you know that probably takes place every four or five months and eventually mm-hmm. it'll be back in stock but then again i kind of feel like we should be getting the raspberry pi 5 at some yeah. point like yeah. soon yeah soon yeah the, i think that would be a good way for the raspberry pi foundation to go just start with the, the releasing the pi fives when they're and, able to <laughs> you know that that is not founded on anything other than sparkles and unicorn intestines yes like, i just want <laughs> Yeah, Pretty you just want. Just want. And um, yeah, would... leave leave some leave some for the people, you know, yeah. <laughs> the ones you showed up to the dance with, you know, us end users. Yeah. Got Raspberry Pi where it's at right now. Not, not saying anything against like, of mm-hmm. course, proper biz, business management and all that. But, you know, yeah. we were the ones running out before businesses even knew what Raspberry Pi was. Very, very just true. Saying. And I'm just happy I... I picked up a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig, um, an 8 gig, and I have a Raspberry Pi 400, and I did that before they were hard to find, you know, pre-pandemic. And You know, the one thing that you can still buy regularly is the uh, one with a keyboard. Yeah, yeah, and actually that one came out during the pandemic, mm-hmm. so it's interesting that that one's available, but, but it's not it's only just got 4 the, gigs. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> You start searching for like two gig and four gig Pi four. You can find those. Don't worry. Yeah, the models. one the one gig <laughs> ones are readily available. <laughs> yeah. And it's still even at two hundred dollars. I definitely did some digging around because mm-hmm. I'm always curious about being able to replace. I have three x eighty six boxes under the desk on this side. You know the monitor here, monitor here, and I don't have a third box for the uh, Discord or if we bring a person in. As a guest, and I'd love to be able to replace them with, you know, a small uh, board PC. You know, like Nooks are just incredibly too expensive and even suck too much power, but a Pi 4 yeah. type device. And even looking at like the rock chips and banana pies and stuff like mm-hmm. that, they're not even any cheaper right now. 
No. You're like by the time you get up to something with eight gigs and all that, you're still looking at like two hundred and fifty dollars a piece. And that's where the Pi four eight gig really shone. Like seventy five bucks. Yeah. Even if it was ninety nine dollars, like all right. Um that that is almost two hundred? <laughs> nope. Oh two hundred. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> at two hundred I can get a radically more powerful SPC. Yeah. From, yeah. you know, Banana Pie or some other place like that with, like, built-in NVMe and all mm-hmm. the other bells and whistles. So, yeah, it does, it's not competitive Absolutely. at that point outside of it has that ecosystem built in. But, you know, I'm just, I'm patient. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, just got, I just got done waiting through, you know, two and a half years for a video card. Like, yeah. <laughs> that I we got, got disappointed on I'm good. today. <laughs> all right, everyone. Running a little bit long, but we need to get out of here. Um, yes. You can contact us uh, on our web zone. On Twitter, at Vin Stone, at Jill Bryant, Jill mm-hmm. underscore Linux girl 137463 <laughs> dash at, parentheses. At Jill underscore Linux girl on Twitter and on Mastodon <laughs> and even on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all, all the things. I'm on everything. <laughs> there you go. TikTok. You yep, TikTok? I'm on TikTok too. Yes. <laughs> now, have you done anything on TikTok? I didn't yeah, ask if you I had have a couple. I have a couple videos up on TikTok. So if we're going to go there right there, live, right yeah. now, we're going to oh, find videos? Yeah, you 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 will uh, for my other network that I <laughs> podcast on, Destination what Linux. What are they about? <laughs> Tell me. I want to find out. Uh, there, well, one of them is about unique mice that are in my collection that I showed off <laughs> during one of the episodes, like a phone so when mouse. When you say mice, I'm thinking about mice. Yeah. <laughs> No. It's like, this is my mice. six-legged mice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't have six-legged mice, people. All right. We got a bounce. <laughs> Credits. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Thank you to all our wonderful patrons. This one doesn't like cheese. Oh, I... yes, Joe. You can make a TikTok of all the pink tuxes I have. That, that could uh, definitely happen. <laughs> Uh, thank you to our beautiful executive producers and our uh, Chicago people <laughs> and our wonderful sea monsters. We got so many cool people in there and our death notes. We have so many patrons that I can't name them all. You just gave up. I can name yes. each and every one of you if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> We know Maybe. that know a lot of them by heart. <laughs> also, boom. Do you know it? I found the markers. Thank you again oh, for the NVMe go. drive. I couldn't nice. find it for like a week. I tore the sus part. Good night, everybody. Uh, oh, I'll see you okay. next week. <laughs>